This is John Imervar. For today's visit to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, we're going to look at paintings of the Annunciation. I've asked my friend Kevin Hughes, professor of theology at Villanova University, to help us explore this topic. Kevin, let's start with this image of the Annunciation by Zanobi Strozzi, an Italian artist of the 1400s. What is the Annunciation? The Annunciation is the moment when Christians believe a young teenage girl, Mary of Nazareth, said yes to God's plan of salvation. She would bear a child who would be the Son of God. For Christians, salvation itself depends on that one moment of yes. In this painting, we can see all the basic elements of the story. We see the angel Gabriel arriving on the clouds of heaven. His hand is extended in a sign of blessing. He's announcing God's plan, which is why we call it the Annunciation. In his left hand, he's carrying the white lily, which is a symbol of Mary's purity. And if we look at Mary, she's dressed in her traditional colors. There's blue as the outward sign of her dignity, and then red underneath as a sign of her maternal compassion. Mary's sitting in a posture of humility, with her arms crossed over her chest. And between and above the two of them, you can see a dove descending on a golden ray of light. This is the Holy Spirit descending upon her to miraculously conceive the child Jesus in her womb. And if you look at the way her robes are opened just over her heart and her womb, you can see that she is ready to receive the Spirit and say yes. Thanks. I'm always fascinated by the passage in the Bible that describes this scene. Can you talk us through it? It's interesting to note that the story of the Annunciation appears only in one of the four Gospels. It appears at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke. And we hear that Gabriel is sent to Mary, who is already engaged to Joseph, but they are not yet married. And I think the story really falls into three dramatic moments. The first moment begins when Gabriel arrives and he says, Rejoice, Mary, the Lord is with you. And the story tells us that she's not a little bit frightened. And so Gabriel has to follow up quickly and say, do not be afraid. And he explains the plan, that she will conceive a son and he will be son of the Most High. That's the first moment. The second moment comes when Mary, hearing all of this news, <laughs> turns and asks Gabriel a question. How can this be? She's confused. She's not married. She's never known a man. So how could she conceive? And Gabriel explains that nothing is impossible for God. The third moment follows after that. Mary says, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Let's look at another of the museum's Annunciation images by Luca Signorelli, another artist from Italy in the 1400s. How does this painting fit into the idea of three moments? If we think of the serenity of that first image that we saw, this painting by Signorelli might come as a little bit of a surprise. This is clearly the moment, that first moment when Gabriel arrives. We see Gabriel has a kind of forward momentum, and we see Mary reeling back. Her hands are up in surprise, it seems to me. Um, she's dropped her book. She's looking down. And even Signorelli seems to have made her head a little bit small proportionally, just to emphasize the, the, the sense that she's pulling back. Notice we have a lot of the same elements that we saw in the earlier painting. We have the lily. We have the hand of blessing. We have her red and blue garments. But Signorelli has captured the sort of shock, the sense of interruption. God is showing up to do something completely different. Thanks. For me, another detail that captures the energy of this picture is the shadow of the flying angel. I don't know if I can think of another shadow, anything like that, in the museum. It seems to have entered Mary's space even before the angel arrives. For me, the picture that best captures the second moment is Henry Ossowa's Tanner's Annunciation from 1898. Tanner is African-American, trained here in Philadelphia, and he seems to want to move away from the idea that Mary is a well-dressed European woman. Do you agree? Yes, Tanner's painting shows us a very different Mary. She's clothed in what looked to be more traditional clothes for a poor girl in Palestine in the first century, and she seems to have just woken up and her robes seem to kind of blend in with the sheets on the bed. But if you look in her eyes and the tilt of her head, 
she seems to be skeptical. She seems to be asking a question. As you said, I think this looks to me like the second moment in the story where Mary is asking, how can this be? We might notice some of the other changes. Instead, of course, of a human-looking angel, we have this hovering light. And in, you can see that we still have the traditional Marian colors of blue and red, but you might have to look for them a little bit. They're on the blankets, off to the right side, cast onto a chair or something, and then in the red cloth draped behind her. It's almost as if Tanner wants to honor the tradition and the symbols that we are used to and come to expect. But he also wants to show us a very real teenage girl in the first century asking a very challenging question. Thanks, Kevin. I want to share a detail here that for me adds another dimension to the story. Notice that the column of light intersects with the shelf and creates the image of a cross. So in effect, we're seeing both Jesus' birth and his death on the cross in the same picture. But now let's move to what you have described as the third moment, with this remarkable Annunciation picture by the Spanish artist de Zuberan. This is a fascinating painting. Mary's expression here shows no shock and no question. She seems peaceful and resolved. She's already turning back to her prayer. We see Gabriel bowing and crossing his hands as if to honor this great yes that she has just uttered. You might notice the little piece of paper in the lower left corner. Zuberan, the painter, has used this to sign his name on the painting. But within the context of the painting, it's almost as if Gabriel has finished delivering his message and he's cast his notes aside to bow down in awe. This work is from the Baroque period of Christian art, where painters wanted to show the continuity between heaven and earth and the visibility of the sacred. Here we see that Gabriel has come to Mary, and we can see the dove of the Holy Spirit on its way, as we've come to expect. But we also see that a kind of gateway has opened up between heaven and earth, and the heavenly host of angels has shown up to witness this great moment of Mary's yes and celebrate with her. Which leads me to take a look at the cloth draped above Mary's head. What do you think of that, John? Right. Fabric and textile are always important for Zorboran. He comes from a family of textile manufacturers, as you can see in the amazing vestments of the angel. But what is this cloth? It's clearly nothing that's in the room. I think it's a veil or curtain that separates heaven from earth. And now we see this one angel drawing back the veil, indicating that at this moment, the spiritual has entered our world. Thanks so much, Kevin. You've taken us on a remarkable journey. Can you sum it up for us? So today we've seen these three dramatic moments in the Annunciation story. First, the shocking interruption of grace that's captured by Signorelli. Then, the moment of questioning captured so vividly by Tanner. And lastly, the triumphant moment of Mary's humble, let it be done to me, in Zuberon. Together, they narrate this pivotal event in what Christians consider the drama of salvation. And they point forward to Mary's great song of victory that comes at the very end of this story in a kind of grand finale. Magnificat anima mea, my soul magnifies the Lord. 